Good morning. My name is Rashmi Malik and I have been volunteering my services for the last 20 years in the field of Indian classical music. I'm an active member of a Spik Mekke, a movement working relentlessly towards preserving and conserving our classical cultural ancestry. Today I'm going to talk about history of Hindustani music, which is one of the two traditions of Indian classical music, other being Carnatic music. Uh, it is a very vast and complex um, uh, uh, subject, but I will try and simplify it. I'd like to start with talking about music a little bit. I think music is omnipresent. It is there in the first cry of the newborn child, in the early morning chirping of the birds, in the whistling of the trees. There is music in the falling of the raindrops. There is gushing flow of the river has beautiful music in the waves of the ocean, sometimes calm, sometimes forceful. They all form part of a very big orchestra of the universe. Music is also infinite. It is indigenous across regions. Various regions in the world have their own very rich, and vibrant and unique forms of music, both classical and folk. Some of the most prevalent classical musical traditions of the world are Indian classical music, Western classical music, Chinese classical music, Spanish and Arabic classical music. Many other classical music forms have emerged over a period of time. Indian classical music can be traced all the way back to Vedic times, where hymns and prayers were sung in the praise of gods and goddesses, uh, in temples and at religious rituals. It is a compilation of these hymns and songs and verses in Rig Veda, the ancient religious scripture written in Sanskrit that tells us about the existence of classical music between 1500 BC and 500 BC. Rig Veda holds the lyrics of these songs and hymns and verses composed by the priests of those ancient times. It is only in the scripture Samaveda that we are connected to Indian music. Samveda is a collection of hymns, songs and verses that were to be sung to set melodies. There are other, of course, texts like Natya Shastra, Datilam, Sangeet Ratnakar, also shedding more light on the prevailing music of those times. The melodies of these hymns and songs were passed on by word of mouth from one generation to the next. It is also from these ancient texts and scriptures that one sees the existence of Guru Shishya Parampara of Indian music. And Guru Shishya Parampara was not only the foundation of Indian music, it was the foundation of all knowledge of ancient India. Guru Shishya Parampara is the teaching methodology of music. Classical music is a Shruti Parampara, which means you gain knowledge by listening and hearing your Guru. Well, he's imparting the knowledge. All music traditionally and till today was passed on by word of mouth by the Guru on to his disciple. In this tradition, the Guru would accept a disciple, educate him, impart knowledge after ensuring the worthiness of the disciple. In Guru Shishya Parampara, the disciple would live with the Guru in his house. He would learn the art and the nuances of the art, also tend to the household chores of the Guru. This would create a, a sort of a beautiful bond which would be at an intellectual and spiritual level and also bind them emotionally together. The Guru, on the other hand, was expected to impart all his knowledge of the art to the disciple. There are cases when um, uh, the Gurus would be biased and keep one little finer nuance of the knowledge to him or herself, but mostly the Gurus were very, very generous in imparting the knowledge to these disciples. Over the years, many of these music gurukuls and schools started receiving patronage from rich and royal. The concept of Gurukul converged into gharanas or schools of music from the mid 16th century. However, it was only by the 19th century when the royal patronage towards arts and masters had started to decline that the musicians had to look for their livelihood out of their immediate surroundings into big cities. Musicians had to look for their concert opportunities and livelihood outside their immediate surrounding in the bigger cities. So the only way for these uh, great masters to retain their identity when they moved out of their uh, immediate habitats to bigger urban centers was to keep the name of the region attached to theirs to represent their particular gharana. In a small example I'm going to give you of the founder of the Kirana gharana, Abdul Karim Khan. 
he was from Kirana, a small town in Uttar Pradesh, but he moved all the way to the southern part of India. So he retained the name of his hometown as the name of Gharana. This made the concept of Gharanas more prevalent and known as the people would identify a particular musician with their Gharana. Fortunately, the oral tradition of a Guru Shishya Parampara is in practice till today, although in much changed form. Now I'm going to talk a little bit of Hindustani music and how it diverged from the mainstream Indian ancient classical music. As you know, Indian classical music was sung in temples. It was sung in praises of gods and goddesses. It was a daily ritual uh, in the temples and in the households of people living in those ancient times. It was only in the 12th century with the arrival of Islam in India that Hindustani music started evolving from Indian classical music. There were different socio-political conditions uh, in Northern India, which were having a direct influence on the classical music of those times. With the advent of Delhi Sultanate came Persian, Arabic and other foreign cultural influences onto Hindustani Indian classical music. There was a mixing of cultures, there was interweaving of cultures, amalgamation of Hindu civilization with Islamic culture, which was responsible for Hindustani music as we see today. A beautiful example of mixing of these cultures is the growing popularity of Amir Khusro. Amir Khusro was a poet, uh, a musician and a composer. He composed beautiful bandishes in uh, Braj Bhasha, in um, uh, Persian language, in Arabic and Urdu. He is also known for the invention of Qawwali, which is a merger of uh, Persian and Arabic musical traditions in Indian classical music. It was under Mughal Emperor Akbar, a great patron of art and culture, that Indian classical music and dance flourished. He had many musicians in his court from different parts of the world. It was in his court that the true fusion between Persian, Arabic and Indian musical traditions took place. There were many successive rulers who patronized Indian art forms, but none like him. As per tradition, Hindustani classical music can be classified into four major forms or styles, uh, namely Drupad, Khyal, Tarana and Tumri. Dhrupad is the most pristine and sophisticated of all Hindustani vocal genres. Its origin is traced back to Samaveda. It is spiritual in constitution. It has till today maintained purity of ragas and swaras. Dhrupad was sung in temples and it is devotional and spiritual in nature. The alab, introductory section of the raga, are deep and meditative. Compositions for Dhrupad's style of singing exhibit intricate rhythmic pattern. The teaching of Dhrupad follows Guru Shishya Parampara very closely till today. The disciples live with the gurus in their houses, devoting themselves to the art, to the guru, riyas, and also serving the gurus for a defined period of time. There are four major Dhrupad styles of singing. These are called Gaharbani, Noharbani, Khandarbani and Dagarbani. Dagarbani being the most famous of all and still very, very prevalent, it has to its credit an unbroken lineage of over 22 generations. Some of the greatest exponents of Dagarbani are Ustad Nasiruddin Dagar, Ustad Nasir Mahinuddin Dagar, Ustad Nasir Aminuddin Dagar, Ustad Zia Fariduddin Dagar, Ustad Fahimuddin Dagar. Currently, Bahaduddin Dagar on Rudraveena are carrying the torch forward. I want to make a special mention of Khandarwani style of Drupad here. Unfortunately, for the want of good disciples, a beautiful tradition as Khandarwani died with the passing away of famous bean car Ustad Asad Ali Khan. In 18th century, Dharbanga Gharana, Betia Gharanas emerged in Bihar, Bengal and Varanasi. They of course produced some great exponents like Pandit Ram Chatur Malik, Pandit Abhay Narayan Malik. Now I want to talk a little bit about another very major and popular genre of Hindustani music, Khyal genre, Khyal Gaiki. As the name suggests, it is imaginary and spontaneous in character. It is derived from Dhrupad, but it is a lot more ornamental. It is said to have been invented or evolved by an uncle nephew team of Sadarang and Adarang. 
in the court of Mughal king Muhammad Shah Rangili. Khyal bandishes or compositions are typically composed in mixed expressions of Hindi, Braj, Urdu and Persian languages and also sometimes in regional languages such as Bhojpuri, Punjabi, Rajasthani and Marathi. The themes of these compositions include divine love, praises of gods and kings, seasons, dawns and rastra. Khyal has many gharanas to its credit and some of these gharanas are very prevalent even today. One of the oldest and most predominant gharana of Khyal genre is that of Gwalior gharana. It was established in the court of Mughal emperor Akbar by his court musician Mia Tansin. It was later developed by Hasu Khan and Hadu Khan in mid 19th century. Khyal Gayaki of this gharana is known for its simplicity and emphasis on rags and thals. Some of the legendary musicians produced by this gharana are Vishnu Digambar Palsikar, Pandit Krishna Rao Shankar Pandit, Pandit Vinayak Torvi, Pandit Ullas Kashalkar. Another very famous gharana of Khyal Gayaki is Agra gharana. It is known for its blend of Khyal Gayaki with Dhrupad. It was founded by Gagge Khuda Baksh and some of the most famous musicians of this gaiki are Ustad Fiyaz Khan, Ustad Hussain Khan, Srimati Purnima Sen, Pandit Yashpal Sharma, Ustad Raja Mia. Here I'd like to make a special mention of this very bright young ice officer, a disciple of Pandit Yashpal, Kashish Mittal, who is pursuing this gharana very devotedly. Now we come to Jaipur Gharana. Jaipur Gharana was also called Jaipur Atroli Gharana. Personally, it is one of my most favorite gharanas. This gharana was founded by Ustad Aladya Khan. It evolved from Dhrupa tradition and is known for its lekari. It has produced some of the greatest stalwarts of Hindustani classical music. Kesar by Kerkar, Magu by Kurdikar, Kishori Amonkar, Malikarjun Mansur, Raj Shekhar Mansur, Ashwani Bide and many, many more illustrious musicians come from this school of music. Kirana Gharana, one of the most prolific gharanas of Hindustani classical music. It is known for its highly intricate and ornate use of tans. Founded by Abdul Karim Khan, its name is derived from Kairana, a small town in Uttar Pradesh and the birthplace of Abdul Karim Khan. He was a frequent visitor to the courts of Mysore which was responsible for a great Carnatic influence in his music. The famous exponents of this gharana are Savai Gandharf, Pandit Bhim Singh Joshi, Roshanara Begum, Prabha Atre, Pandit Venkatesh Kumar, and a young Jay Thirat Mavindi is making this gharana famous with his beautiful renditions in Kirana style. Bhindi Bazar Gharana, founded by Chaju Khan in Bhindi Bazar of Mumbai. This gharana is known for his stress on breath control. Some of the famous musicians from other gharanas also took training under this gharana. Musicians like Kishori Amenkar, Jitendra Abhisheki and also the Bollywood Nightingale Lata Mangeshkar. Patiala gharana. Patiala gharana is a more recent gharana. It was founded by Bade Fateh Ali Khan and Ali Baksh Khan. It was supported and patronized by Maharaja Bhupendra Singh of Patiala. This gharana is known for its pentatonic ragas. Famous exponents of this, this gharana are Bade Gulam Ali Khan, legendary Parveen Sultana and Ajay Chakravarti. Then there's also a beautiful gharana of or style of music called Rampur Saheswan gharana. Ustad Inayat Hussain Khan, the founder of this gharana, was chief musician at the royal court of Rampur. Ustad Gulam Mustafa, Ustad Rashid Khan are some of the legendary musicians of this gharana. Then there are a few more gharanas pursuing classical gaiki, such as Indore gharana, Mevati gharana of Ustad Amir Khan and Pandit Jasraj fame. Sham Charasi gharana of Khayal gaiki, known for it being sung in Jugalbandi style, where two musicians sing same compositions together on one platform. This school was developed by Nazakat Ali and Salamat Ali Khan in mid 20th century and is very famous till today for its Jugalbanti style of singing. Now we come to some other forms of Hindustani classical music, Tarana and Tumri. Tarana and Tumri are the two other important forms of Hindustani classical music. 
Tarana was invented by Amir Khosrow and was greatly influenced by the Persian tradition of short songs. Tumri is semi-classical form of Hindustani music. The themes of the compositions of Tumri are mostly romantic and devotional in nature. Indian classical music also has a very strong tradition of classical musical instruments, both in Hindustani style and in Carnatic style. According to the Vedic literatures, all music was combination of Vedyam, Gitam and Rhythm. Samveda mentions different kinds of musical instruments such as Bean and Bansuri. Therefore, one can trace the existence of these back to Vedic period. In Indian mythology too, one sees various gods and goddesses performing musical instruments. The Holy Trinity of Hindu gods are known for mastering musical instruments. Lord Shiva is known for playing Veena and Damru. Brahma played Veena. Vishnu played the Shank. Lord Ganesha is known to be the god of Nidangam and Pakhavaj. Saraswati, the goddess of knowledge, wisdom and all arts, is always depicted holding and playing Veena. Lord Krishna, incarnation of Vishnu, was known for luring Gopikas through his flute. Narad Muni, the mischievous Vedic storyteller, used Ektara and Kartal as his accompanying instruments while singing hymns and stories. Ravana, the demon king of Lanka, a known learned scholar, follower of Lord Shiva, mastered Veena. He is said to have invented another string instrument called Hatha, which is used by the folk musicians of Rajasthan till today. Indian classical musical instruments can be classified into three main categories, string instruments, wind instruments and percussion instruments. Veena, Sitar, Surbahar, Israj, Sarangi, Santur, Tanpura and Sarod fall in the string category. Bansuri and Chennai fall under the category of wind instruments. They have been served by some of the greatest legends of Hindustani classical heritage. Pandit Hari Prasad Charasya, like Krishna, mesmerizes his audience in every concert he renders. Chennai Vadan of Ustad Bismillah Khan Saab is known all over the world. Natswaram, another wind instrument, is a very revered classical music instrument from south of India. Percussion instruments form a very integral part of Indian classical music. Tabla and Pakhavaj come from the Hindustani music traditions, while Mirdangam, Khanjira and Ghatam from the Carnatic traditions. However, most of these instruments are used more as accompanying instruments rather than solo instruments. Like vocal traditions, classical instrumental music also follows different gharanas. Some of the famous musicians of this gharana include Ustad Imdad Khan himself, Ustad Inayat Khan, legendary Vilayat Khan Saab, Ustad Imrat Khan. Currently, Ustad Shahid Parvez and Ustad Shujat Khan are the torchbearers of this gharana. Another very famous gharana of string instruments is that of Mayar gharana. This was founded by Ustad Alauddin Khan, father of Ustad Ali Akbar Khan and Annapurna Devi, guru and father-in-law of Pandit Ravi Shankar of international fame. Some of the other great exponents of this gharana are Pandit Nikhil Banerjee, Pandit Vishmon Bhatt. Senior Bangesh gharana, one of the branches of senior gharana founded by Mia Tansin. It was under Muhammad Wazir Khan that the Bangesh lineage was connected to the senior gharana. Ustad Hafiz Ali Khan Saab, one of the greatest Sarod players of all times, came from this gharana. Now we come to the percussion gharanas. There are six famous tabla gharanas, which are an integral part of Hindustani classical music. These are Dili gharana, Banaras gharana, Lucknow gharana, Farukhabad gharana, Ajrara gharana, and Punjab gharana. Punjab Gharana has produced the most popular and famous tabla maestro, Ustad Zakir Hussain. As Hindustani music was presiding in northern India, so was Carnatic music, flourishing under the patronage of kings of Mysore, Travancore, and Maratha rulers of Tanjore in the southern part of the subcontinent. The development of Carnatic music was different from that of Hindustani music due to the differing geopolitical and social conditions of North and South India. Therefore, there are no outside influences seen in Carnatic music. 
some of the famous composers of Carnatic music are the sage Parandar Das and the trinity of Thyagaraja, Sham Sastri and Muthu Swami Dikshitar. It will take many more episodes of Brain Trust to talk about that school of music. So I will only play music for you to enjoy.